Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and do you want to learn about another game engine? Of course you do, there can never be too many game engines, correct? And that's what we're going to do, we're going to check out another one today, this is called the Easy Engine, and this one is completely free, open source, and it's been in development for years now, I think since 2014. Uh, it's quite mature, obviously it's still got a bit of a ways to go, but it's an interesting project for sure, and here you are right now in the Easy Editor. Now the unfortunate thing is, even though this is a Qt based application, it is Windows focused for now. Now, the back-end libraries run on Mac and Linux as well, uh, but the actual editor itself is unfortunately a Windows-only project. Right now, you can see I am in the uh, asset browser aspect of it, so you can see all the various different things that are supported here, and you can kind of get an idea of how uh, cool this engine can actually be. So let's say you want a particle effect. We've got one here. So you can see it in action. You can see all the various different tools that are done here, but the coolest thing is all of this is being implemented as a plugin. So this is an entirely modular based game engine. These are all, so come here, you'll see what I mean. So editor settings, uh, editor plugins, you can see here, we've got plugins for uh, particle effects. What we are seeing, all of this stuff in the editor, this, this editor you see in front of you, this window here, uh, this particle animation system, that is all implemented modularly. So if you want to use Easy Engine as your uh, basis for creating your own drive game engine, you want to do all the work yourself, that's kind of what it is set up for. You also notice here, they've implemented TypeScript as a front-end scripting language. There's TypeScript, and there's supposed to be a Visual Script, but I don't know if Visual Script is 100% ready to go, but you can see kind of some of the tools you're working with, and then things are modular in action. So if you want to go ahead and add effect reactions, you can. Down here, we've got various different things, so light meshes, so on trails. So we want to add a trail in here, we could do so. Kind of gives you an idea of how things are organized, and we've got quite a bit of control over our particle systems. Now I'm going to head back over here to the asset browser, and we are probably most interested in is a scene. Let's filter that down and we're going to open up corridor and this is an example level that you can walk around navigate in and kind of gives you an idea of how things are organized so for example i grab one of these little lightning bolts here uh these are all um not actually sure what they are so let's grab one of these things instead you see here it is a pickup already defined they've got some prefab settings that you can so it's a prefab system uh, we could go ahead and go to the prefab over here but there's some values that we can specify so the prefabs are configurable so say we want a different color for the prefab that individual instance you'll notice it's changing while the other ones are staying the same so you do have prefab support in this guy out of the box once again it is component based so if you want to add another component you're going to see we have a ton of them out of the box. So we've got things here for AI management, uh, ray casting, and so on. We've got animation controllers, we've got some debug stuff, special effects, uh, some generalized things, uh, input handling, we've got things for mixed reality. If you scroll down here, we've got things for virtual reality. Uh, we've got a tree plugin system, uh, rendering control, and so on. So uh, there is a um, good number of components available for you to work with out of the box. And as you saw, we've got that nice component-based system here as well. Uh, head on back over to the asset browser. Come down here, we'll see uh, the rendering pipeline is completely configurable. So we go here, rendering uh, render target, no, render pipeline. I want render pipeline, not target. All right, so let's get rid of those guys. And then here you can see editor, render pipeline, main main render pipeline, and you can control and configure it this way. So we go ahead, we can add new passes in, and it's basically linked up and managed that way. So you can scroll over, and you can see the entire render pipeline in actions. Obviously, you can configure it and set things up yourself. Uh, we've even got over here, and I think this is implemented as a plugin as well. We've got procedural uh, geometry generation in here, so uh, you can do this way various different things for controlling uh, procedural generation. This one is placing trees into the scene. You can see the properties available over here for the, the prefabs that are being used. There's two different prefabs. So you've got uh, procedural generation as an option here as well. Again, I think that was done as a plugin as well. And I'm back over here, we've got our materials. So let's go find a material here. So let's open up a material. And of course, if you open something like this up, you get a viewer, viewport over here. You got control over the uh, blend modes, the shading mode, uh, the, the material type. Also got visual shader option available right here. I don't actually know how to use this. So I'm going to, you can see the kind of the idea here. So let's go, boom. 
again, a visual scripting type system uh, for making visual shaders. So you're gonna be shocked at just how uh, robust this guy actually is. Now I'm gonna get the hell out of here because again, I don't have a clue what I'm doing. So no, we're not gonna save that. One thing I do find kind of weird is the, the main menu is off of settings. I, and I don't, and this is normally its own floating window. Uh, it's it's a little strange. You'll notice there was a release in May of 2020. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. Uh, but this is a very robust engine we got again. Meshes, mesh previewer, and settings and configurations for those meshes. Um, yeah, that's kind of the idea. And then the last thing that we're kind of going to focus on here is the scripting options. So we do have integration in here. So if I go back here, uh, you'll see tools open in Visual Studio Code. Uh, but what we can also do, asset browser, let's go find a TypeScript here. I'm going to have various different, ooh, let's get rid of some of these other stuff so I can actually find it. Here we go, the TypeScript stuff. So here we've got break on damage. You can see here, we've got options. Now I actually don't get this to work and I'm not sure if I'm just doing something wrong, but you can see we can pass in variables and they're being generated right here. And those variables will be exposed to the script in the editor. I should be able to add new ones like I just showed there. So something like uh, meaning of life, and of course, 42, uh, and it should be up here. So I don't, I don't know how to make this kick, but you kind of get an idea of how you expose the variables out. And you got a little lightweight editor available over here. Actually, it's a viewer. So if you want to edit this, you're going to have to get that uh, Visual Studio Code integration going. Now, interestingly enough, it, it's not finding my Visual Studio Code for some reason. Uh, and I do have Visual Studio Code installed on this. So there is a configuration issue behind the scenes that I haven't really worked to resolve, but it does give you an idea. So that's the scripting here. You can use the TypeScript language. You can use the Visual Script stuff that we saw earlier on, or I guess you could do it in your own module C++ side of things. And it's it's a very interesting engine for sure. Um, it, it's shocking to see, again, just the extent of stuff that was implemented in here. Um, and then when you're ready to actually go ahead, so let's go find my scene again right here, the corridor scene. By the way, completely uh, configurable. So I can you know drag and drop and uh, reconfigure my, my scenes however I wish. Uh, so here we can drop this guy back in and we put it at top level or we could just dock it to the top window or dock it to the main window, etc. So you do have full configurability of the entire editor. Um, all the tabs, it kind of dock how you might expect them to. Uh, but once you're here, you're also going to notice each window has its own set of tools or toolbar here. We're in the main window for viewing a scene. Uh, so let's go on back to it. Where did Corridor go? Where are you, Corridor? All right, seriously, where are you? Over here. All right, my bad. By the way, we can also, I think you can reorder them. Uh, maybe not. Anyways, so here we go. Main editor, I've tore it off. So if you've got a multi monitor, you can bring that over to the other screen. Uh, you can start running the scene. Let's go back where there's something dynamic happening. So there should be a, a blob of stuff somewhere. Let me just go find the blob of stuff. Uh, oh, I passed it. Where'd you go? There we go. So there's the blob. Then what I could do is I could come in here and say, okay, start running. And you're going to see things in this. So this guy right here has a bunch of stuff attached to it, dynamic actors. And we've got like this particle effect going on with it and so on. So that is all being shown when we do the run. So I stop that. We've also got the option of basically we can export out our scene. So, all right, that didn't do what I expected it to. Uh, but we can just go ahead and actually run the scene. So I'm going to do that. And this is basically playing your game. Now you're going to notice we have full physics. So, and then we have audio and let's get something big and explosion happening. There you go. So you got chain reaction explosions going on. And yeah, that's kind of it. That's easy engine in action. That's actually a game in easy engine uh, being showcased. We still have some explosions going on in the background. Uh, so you see, you've got, you know, full level placement editing. Um, you've got, um, uh, physics going on, particle system effects, everything you would expect from a game engine is pretty much there. So if you're looking for a tool to build your own game engine out of, this might be a nice choice for you. So if you're interested a little bit more about it, uh, I'm on their GitHub page right now. You can see here it's available at github.com forward slash easy engine forward slash easy engine again. It is under the MIT code license, which is very cool because MIT is one of the most liberal licenses out there from an end user's perspective. There's no real encumbrance on that. You just can't hold them liable. Uh, but otherwise you can do pretty much whatever you want with it. Just no warranty on their end. Um, You've got uh, OK documentation. We'll see that in a little bit. As you can see from these uh, update times, this is a very much under uh, 
really like it, it's getting very actively developed if you want to go ahead and check it out by the way i uh, just head on over here go to the releases tab right there uh, you can see there was just released nine days ago at least as of the time i'm recording this and going back before that we had releases going back so february so two or three months earlier uh then july of the year before february of the year before then you're gonna see here we go all the way back to 2014 when v4 was released so this guy has been under development for well, as you can see, at least six years of public releases. So it is a mature engine in that regard. The entire idea, again, behind this is the modularity. So um, the core libraries, as I mentioned earlier on, can run on other platforms such as Mac and Linux, uh, but is mainly currently developed on Windows, higher level functionality such as rendering and the tools are only available there. But again, it's all Qt-based applications. So if you're interested in porting this to another platform, it should be doable. Again, the big part of this is the uh, plugin-based modularity. So if you want to replace it, you can. The sound system is using FMOD. You can swap that out if you so wish the physics is using phys x you could you know put in bullet or ode or whatever kind of physics you wanted because it is done as runtime plugins uh did over there so there's uh, editor runtime plugins and there's game engine runtime plugins so uh kind of cool in that regard a uh, little bit more details of what's available there there's a couple other samples there the samples actually come out of the box so if you come here go to editor and then open project you're gonna find samples are in the data directory. Basically, when you download this, you extract it as a zip. Uh, there's gonna be a couple other ones there. For example, there's a simple RTS project. A top level view of a space RTS game in action. So you could check that out as another example of where to get started and where to go. Again, what you're gonna probably wanna do is load this guy up, find the scene file of choice, load it up, and then kind of just look at what is actually out there. So you got the prefabs that are available, like of the various different ships and such that are gonna be in space. So there is a prefab, the exposed properties of prefabs and so on. Prefabs are made of stuff, in this case, just a simple mesh. And again, they're composed of various different components. And yeah, that is kind of, that's easy engine in a nutshell. I uh, head back and over here for a sec. Again, as I mentioned earlier on, let's go in here for the code. For the editor, for example, uh, editor again, main, and you will see C++ code and Qt uh, as the uh, as the framework being used. So I generally find that Qt apps are pretty easy to read. Uh, I, I, I again, I am kind of shocked that if this is a Qt based app, that it is Windows only for now. Uh, so I would be interested to look at maybe if they're using DirectX as their only renderer or something to that effect. Uh, I haven't really looked into it. So yeah, they are definitely using DirectX and HLSL. So maybe that's the problem. Maybe they just don't have a, like a Vulkan or a OpenGL backend. Uh, but for the most part, I, I should think it should be portable to other platforms with a fairly minimum amount of work because the backend systems are already available on different platforms. And again, it's a Qt application. So if, if you're like saying, okay, where's the Linux version? It, maybe you can contribute that. Uh, but it's nice to see a modular uh, plug-in based kind of game engine. The whole idea is that you could basically, uh, you know, turn it into uh, what you need. So if it doesn't have what you want, pick and choose what you want, build the rest yourself. Kind of a nice approach to it. As I mentioned earlier on, there was a release back in May. I'm not going to get into all the details of the release. It's, it's pretty much fine level stuff. Uh, but what we do have is improved documentation. Now, this is kind of a mixed bag. We got um, instructions on how to build for different platforms, different targets, and so on. Uh, we got a little bit of detail on the samples. We got details on how to use the editor projects and so on. And then we got about a 50-50 ratio of filled in documentation and to-do documentation. Then when we get into like the uh, the more advanced stuff, we've got a lot more of the to-do coming in. So we wanna learn about visual shaders. Well, you gotta wait, it's a to-do. Uh, but you know what? A lot of these open source projects have zero documentation. So this is definitely improvement over those kind of things. But you got a bit of a mixed bag of what you're dealing with. If you're not comfortable in jumping into the code to try and figure out how things are working, uh, it's probably not the right engine for you. But it, it's got a decent amount of documentation going on anyways. So that is it. That is Easy Engine, an MIT licensed open source uh, 3D game engine, kind of a framework for making your own engines out of it, sort of similar to the machinery that we covered a few days back few weeks back. Uh, time time is a very relative thing these days, isn't it? So anyways, let me know what you think. Yeah, of course, you're, you're going to sit there and go, well, why wouldn't I just use Unity or why wouldn't I just use Unreal or why wouldn't I just use Godot? And those are always perfectly valid questions. And uh, yeah, not even going to try to answer them. It's just if this, if this speaks to you, maybe check it out. If it doesn't, eh, another game engine to check out. And that's about it. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.